So today we are talking about guys that are on tier T, but they still complain of having low libido. And I want to break down how TRT can affect that or how it may not even be related to uh, the low libido itself. Libido is way more complex than simply get on TRT and now all of a sudden all you do is think about sex. Sure, for I'd say for a, a nice subset of guys, they get on TRT and then you know what? All the libido problems are solved. But I can honestly say with as many patients that we treated, as many of we've worked with, it's way more complex than simply getting on TRT. There's so many moving components when it comes to having someone's libido be quote unquote ideal. I believe that you can look at libido in, in two different ways. I think you can look at it as a continuum and one end of the continuum, it's really good. On the other content, end of the continuum, it's not as good, but I think that kind of undermines it. So the way I like to interpret it is more of a Venn diagram. And I wanna show you that actually in, in visuals next. Okay, so check it out. Yeah, I get it. This is a super basic picture and that's totally fine, but it does help give us a visualization of the point I'm trying to get across. So let's pretend this pertains to you. You're the guy in the middle. You're the big circle. Now you see there's multiple overlying things that may contribute to whether or not someone's libido can be good or not as defined by themselves. Because again, libido is oftentimes more than just one thing. Yes, hormones, as you can see over here, sometimes hormones are the only piece to help a guy quote unquote fix his libido. But for the vast majority of times, I honestly see it does help when you get their hormones dialed in, but it doesn't necessarily fix it. So let's say, for mm -hmm. instance, you get your hormones dialed in, your libido has gotten better, but it's still not great. There's all these other things that can contribute that you may need to address. Like for instance, if you're obese, if you're out of shape, if you have poor sleep hygiene, guess what? You're gonna be tired all the damn time. And when you're tired all the time, sometimes sleeping takes precedence over having sex. Another thing that guys often downplay is the implication that stress has on your sex drive. So let's put it this way. Pretend, well actually don't pretend, this pertains to most guys, but let's say you work 40 to 60 hours a week. Okay, you're pretty darn stressed out. Say you've got kids on top of that. That's more stress. And say your boss sucks and you've got a bunch of bills to deal with. So therefore, you'll have all these multiple stressful situations that are all compounding. And when these things are raining on your brain, chances are you don't think about sex as much. And in terms of relationship health, this one also plays a huge role into libido. One thing I, I see guys tend to not understand or they overlook or they simply can't perceive it is the implication that communication has in the relationship. For instance, say a guy gets on testosterone, his libido is very high, but he's not communicating with his partner and therefore he doesn't know whether or not they're actually ready or willing to engage in sexual activity. So he may misconstrue that as being low libido when in fact, that's a communication deficit. It absolutely blows my mind how many times guys will say that their libido sucks, their libido is low, but when in fact, they don't even know if their partner is or isn't willing to engage in sexual activity. And next we have psychiatric implications that can negatively affect your libido. In this case, particularly performance anxiety, which may be manifested as you ejaculate too quick, or you can't get it up. Now, if it's true performance anxiety, ask yourself this, do you wake up with erections? If you do, but when you attempt to have sexual activity, you struggle to get an erection or keep an erection, then we know it's most likely psychogenic because again, if you wake up with erections quite frequently, organically, the blood flow, the architecture, the health is still there, but it's, it's not coming, it's not coming to fruition when it's time for sexual activity, which lets me know you're probably checking yourself out. Also, another psychiatric thing that may contribute are the medications, particularly the second generation antipsychotics, the SSRIs, the SNRIs, all those medications are notorious for lowering your libido. Uh, some of those antipsychotics can drive up prolactin, which that can also suppress testosterone. 
Also, when you drive up prolactin, you push down dopamine and that's going to kill your sensitivity. That kills your sensitivity. And guess what? You really don't want to have sex anyway because all the fun's taken out of it. The second to last point I want to talk about is opportunity. I actually see this a lot. I see guys, they actually do have good libido. It's just they don't have any opportunity to express it, to use it with their partner. I mean, if you're at work 60 hours a week, if you're hustling kids around to sports, if you've got all these outside engagements, these these things going on in your life that occupy your time, I mean, heck, your libido may be great, but I mean, if you don't have a chance to use it, then what difference does it make? So here's something I like to ask patients, and this actually kind of rules out, is it the opportunity cause or is it, you know, actual true low libido? I like to ask him, you know what, if you if you could go on vacation tomorrow, if you had nothing to do, no phone, no TV, nothing like that, and you, you had free time for a full week, would you and your spouse, would you and your partner be engaging in sexual activity? And honestly, the vast majority of times, they tell me they'd probably do it two, three times a day. So again, that tells me it's not really a loss of attraction. It's not really a loss of libido. It's a loss of opportunity. In the last area of this Venn diagram, unrealistic expectations. This is probably one of the ones I see the most, especially with client intakes. If your expectation is to walk around with a raging door stopper for a penis every single day, that's not realistic. Furthermore, you might catch you might catch some kind of sexual charge, just being honest with you. So have some realistic expectations about what your libido can be given all the other circles overlapping into the spectrum of your life. You have to have realistic expectations knowing that you might have much opportunity, you might work a lot, your health may not be the best. All those things can play into whether or not your expectations can be realistic or not. 